Kelsey and I took that same car ride, retracing what would be her final moments with Abby and Libby. So as we approach here, do you remember that day, what you said to them? Um, well, I wasn't really talking to them. They were um, mostly talking to each other. Do you remember what they were saying in the back seat? on this portion of the drive, or it was just like anything else, any other day? It was just like any other day. We had the music up really loud, and uh, we were like singing, and um, just the normal things that we did in the car together. And it was the afternoon, right? It was around 1 o'clock? Yeah, like one thirty. And were they making a lot of noise? Is a noise in the back seat? Do you remember what they were saying or what they were doing? Um, Olivia was actually in the front, and Abby was in the back. Um, so we were, we just, we were listening to music really loud and we had the windows down. Um, we were listening to some of Libby's favorite songs, like, um, Heathens by 21 Pilots, that kind of thing. Well, so 21 <laughs> Pilots, Heathens was playing mm -hmm. that day, that plays in your mind? Yeah. And when you drop them off, you said, bye, take your sweater. Did they not want to take their sweater? Um. <laughs> or their jacket? Libby didn't think that she needed to of how nice it was but I was like come on you know that you're gonna need it because it's kind of shaded over there so she ended up taking it and Abby had like a short sleeve shirt on so I was like come on you guys can take my sweatshirt so they both had my sweatshirts on I do know that the last things that I said to her she was standing in the doorway of the office and um, I told her that she needed to uh, take a jacket just in case it got chilly and she said I, I, don't, I don't need one I don't, I don't need a jacket and I said Libby take it take a jacket and she said it's okay grandma mm -hmm. and she was standing there with that smile that she does mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't say anything more I said well if you get cold you know and that was uh, that was my last her standing there smiling at me telling me grandma it's okay so um, they they left here uh, right around, give or take a couple minutes, they left here right around 1.30. Uh, what I do know is Kelsey had said that she was talking on the phone to her boyfriend when she dropped them off. And uh, I looked at phone records and it shows that she called or the call come in from her boyfriend at 1.38. So she was talking to her boyfriend at 1.38 when she dropped them off. That's when the phone call started. So I don't know how long she talked to him, and I don't know how many minutes it was to get there. But she dropped them off, and she watched them. She said she watched them until they got to the into the trailhead, and then she pulled on out and went on to her friend's house. So when Derek got done taking his pictures in Frankfurt, he, he came back to pick Libby up. He come up 75 and came across the country roads um, to pick Libby up. Because uh, it's the easy way. That's the way we always go that direction. That's just how you do here. Um, so he when he was, there's a bridge. It's called Wilson's Bridge. And he said as he was crossing that bridge, he called her. Uh, again, we checked phone records, and it was at 311. Kelsey had said that she was talking on the phone to her boyfriend when she dropped them off. And uh, I looked at phone records, and it shows that she called, or the call come in from her boyfriend at 1.38. So she was talking to her boyfriend at 1.38 when she dropped them off. had the music up really loud and uh, we were like singing and um, just the normal things that we did in the car together. The drive from the Patty home to the trail entrance, where Kelsey dropped the girls, takes travelers along four to five miles of flat, straight country roads through scenic farmland and fields. The trip took only about ten minutes. 
While in the car, the girls turned up the radio and sang along with the music, until at 1.36, Kelsey received a call on her cell phone from her boyfriend, Chase. She assured him that as soon as she dropped her sister and her friend, she would be on her way to his place. She was still on the phone with him when Libby and Abby got out of the car at the small parking lot at the trailhead at the Mary I. Gerard Nature Preserve on West County Road 300 North. After she loaned the girls sweatshirts to wear, Kelsey estimates that the girls hopped out of the car at the Monon High Bridge Trail at 1.38 or 1.39 p.m. I looked at phone records and it shows that she called or the call come in from her boyfriend at 138. So she was talking to her boyfriend at 138 when she dropped them off. I notice every time I talk to you, there's a light in your voice and a happiness that you and Mike have and Kelsey as well. Most days I really love life and I'm really looking forward to all the really cool things that Libby has put in my path because I wouldn't be here without her at this point. From those obstacles and struggles have come amazing memories and experiences that outweigh all of the bad. Not all high schoolers can say that they've been on national TV or even though they've been to New York City. Not everyone can say they've met a Victoria's Secret supermodel, been on both sides of the United States in a month, met every single news reporter or FBI agent in the state, or had the opportunity to make thousands of amazing great friends in just a short year. Through all of these things, experiences. They happen through such tragic circumstances, but I'm grateful for every single one of them. Life has taught me a multitude of lessons over the last year and before, but if there's one thing I've really learned about life, it's that it may be unpredictable, erratic, and inconsistent, but in the end, it's absolutely extraordinary.